Speaking of Leader Schumer and I put out a statement on the coronavirus uh, threat. It probably is in your inbox, but uh, in case you don't look there, uh, uh, we said the United States government must address the spread of this deadly um, coronavirus as in a smart, strategic, and serious way. Uh, we must stand ready to work in a bipartisan fashion in Congress and with the administration to achieve the necessary goal. Lives are at stake. This is not a time for name-calling uh, or playing politics. The first step the Congress must take is to ensure that the government has the resources needed to combat this deadly virus and keep Americans safe. And then we go on to some of the uh, provisions that we think need to go with it, but that's, again, in your inbox. Uh, earlier this week, uh, yesterday, actually, I said that the American people need a coordinated whole-of-government a uh, fully funded response to keep us safe from the coronavirus threat. Unfortunately, and this is the purpose of my telling this, unfortunately, up until now, the Trump administration has mounted an opaque and often cha chaotic response to this outbreak. They left critical positions vacant uh, that, uh, in charge of managing p pandemics at the National Security Coun Council and the Department of Homeland Security. They left them vacant. They dismissed the people and never filled the slots. They were there from previous administration. The Trump budget calls for slashing almost $700 million from the Center for Disease Control. And this was the budget which came out after we knew about the coronavirus uh, threat. And now it continues to devalue uh, our health needs by ransacking other public health uh, needs, whether it's the Ebola fund or others. So, that was up until now. Now, we are trying to work in a bipartisan way, and that's one of the reasons that I was delayed in meeting with you this morning. We're trying to, uh, we're coming close to a bipartisan agreement in the Congress as how we can go forward with a number. That is a good start. We don't know how much we will need. Hopefully, not so much more because prevention will work. Uh, but nonetheless, we have to be ready to do what we need to do. And in that um, regard, we want to make sure that the president cannot transfer any of these new funds. This, this is part of the statement from Chuck and me, from Leader Schumer and me. Uh, the president cannot transfer any of these new funds to anything other than use for the coronavirus threat. And that we perhaps will have interest-free loans made available to small businesses which are suffering from uh, uh, the, the coronavirus. Some might maybe have to shut down. Uh, because of that, vaccines, you. we make sure that the vaccines are affordable, affordable. And we think it's important to make that point because of what Secretary Azar said yesterday. Walmart we want, offers we free want vaccines. to ensure that we can work to make it affordable, but we can't control the price because uh, we need the private sector to invest. Really? Uh, th that's this, this would be a vaccine that is developed with the taxpayer dollars uh, to, uh, uh, again, prevent. And we think that should be available to all, everyone, not dependent on big pharma. I guess yesterday when the secretary made that ill-advised statement, he was wearing his pharma hat, which he wore before he came here. And then we want to be sure that state and local governments are reimbursed uh, for the cost incurred while assisting the federal response to the coronavirus outbreak. Again, I, I met with, I spoke with the vice president this morning, made some of these concerns known to him. We have always had a very candid relationship, and I expressed to him the concern that I had of his being mispositioned, while I look forward to working with him, about his, when he was governor of Indiana, slashing the public health uh, uh, budget and having some clinics one, especially a Planned Parenthood clinic, closed, which was the only place where they're in that Scott County where you could get tested for HIV and AIDS. Uh, there was an outbreak. Again, he will have his side of that story. But the fact is, is that the health uh, professional, the, the director of the health in, um, in uh, Indiana at the time, uh, Jerome Adams, was the vice president, then Governor of Pence's health, um, state health officer. He is now the Surgeon General of the United States.
So this is about the forces. It's also about personnel. It's also about respect for science, for uh, uh, evidence-based decision-making. And it's about having so much of that talent that we are so proud of uh, in our uh, uh, public health sector be available in other countries so that we can get a true a true accurate a true and accurate assessment of what is happening in other countries uh, they may be having the best intentions but they may not have uh, shall we say even with the most talent they may have they don't have the, the uh, value added that someone from our country uh, could lend so in any event uh, we look forward as I say to uh, working together in a bipartisan way and hopefully, you know, again, in a very candid way about our concerns about past performance or statements that are made. Let's put that uh, in perspective as we move forward to have the adequate funding, uh, the respect for science and evidence-based decision-making, and again, uh, reimbursement for state and local government and understanding the impact that this has on our communities. And speaking of community, I had the privilege on Monday of... Walk, uh, having a walk through Chinatown. I always love to go there. I feel very proud of it. I always feel uh, very privileged to uh, and, and say, oh, my poor colleagues, when they come home, they don't have the advantage of this beautiful diversity that I have in my district. But sadly, Chinatown is being very hard hit uh, by the uh, lack of tourism and the rest of, of the coronavirus. So a, lot, a number of us went Almost there. This. Many press came, too, uh, to have the us go to temple, light the candle, uh, uh, have a lunch, dim sum, that was, uh, go visit and make fortune cookies in the fortune cookie factory. By the way, fortune cookie machine, which is fabulous, is made in America, and fortune cookies are an American phenomenon. Uh, it's not something you really find in China, or at least it didn't begin there. In any event, uh, in the shops and all the rest, uh, to, be, to show confidence not fear in terms of the, the virus. So again, in every way, we want to be fully prepared, uh, but not um, panicking or fearful of what is happening. Then uh, today, tomorrow, on the floor of the House, we have very important legislation. Uh, it is to stop the youth tobacco epidemic that we're expressing. Also, it's on the public health front. The House will vote on HR. <coughs> 2339, strong legislation to combat the growing use of tobacco and e-cigarette crisis. More than 5.3 million middle, eight, middle school and high school students are using e-cigarettes more than twice as many as two years ago. Uh,